Okay, thank you very much. And uh, Charlie, thank you for the introduction uh, for transformation. Um, I'm here to talk to you about how may, we might use a few less gigawatts um, in the federal government and to talk to you about transformation in the federal government, um, but more around the energy management side. Um, and Charlie, when I'm not being chased by grizzly bears, I'm in Nepal where I have seen uh, solar panels at 17,000 feet. So um, transformation is happening. So as just mentioned, um, I am the acting director of the Federal Energy Management Program, which simply to many is known as FEMP. Uh, we're in the Energy Efficiency and Renewable Energy uh, Program Office, and I have a very long history with FEMP. I love my job. It's kind of like being a superhero uh, because in FEMP, we don't work with one agency, we work with all agencies turning waste into infrastructure. So today, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about FEMP, then we're going to talk um, about U.S. energy consumption to put things in context, and then I'm going to focus on energy savings performance contracts, otherwise known as ESPCs. So, FEMP is a relatively small program within EERE, but our impact is huge. We have a very large impact um, through our work on energy and water management, optimizing facilities, improving workforce, and increasing resiliency and security. So the benefits of our program can be seen across the nation. We support uh, agencies by providing guidance, best practices, tools, technologies, and strategies that help make the federal government more efficient and reduce costs. We also train the federal government workforce. We have online training that's open to anyone um, on many different topics in the energy management space. And we also host an annual energy conference called the Energy Exchange. It happens every August. And it's two and a half days of training, networking, plenaries, a trade show. And most of our courses, whether online or live, are available for uh, education credits. So the last thing that I'm going to mention, because it's going to be the focus of my talk today, is we provide options to the federal government on how to finance projects when they're using something other than appropriations. And that's where ESPC has really come involved. So um, to put things in context, the US uh, energy consumption on total has rid risen steadily in the 80s and 90s and 2000s. And most forecasts state that energy consumption on a whole is going to increase. So while most sectors across the US, uh, from industrial, residential, commercial, have seen increases over the last 40 years, the federal government has made steady progress to reduce their energy consumption since 1975. The U.S. government currently consumes about one quadrillion British thermal units, or BTUs. So a BTU is equal to one match burning. So think about one quad of match, matches lit and burning. That's uh, the equivalent of annual energy consumption of 10.7 million average households. Oops, I went back. I had this really cool slide. There it is. Um, 10.7 million average US households. There's about 135 million households in the United States. So California has about 12.9 million households, and Texas has 9.4 million households. So who are the biggest energy users? Um, it's no surprise, the Department of Defense is the largest agency and the largest energy user in the federal government. They use about 60% of the energy as reported to FEMP for facilities subject to federal reduction goals. But if you count also the energy used for tactical vehicles and equipment that's exempt from the federal mandates, DOD is closer to about 80% of the energies of the federal government's energy use. The Department of Veterans Affairs, DOE, the post 
Postal Service and the Department of Justice are also big energy users. And this makes a lot of sense if you just step back and think about what these different uh, organizations do. You have hospitals for the VA, DOE field offices and their laboratories. Uh, the Department of Justice has prisons. So when looking at this graph, if you look at the color of the boxes, the darker green boxes down um, in the lower right uh, reflect energy intensity or the amount of energy that's used per square foot. So the Department of Health and Human Services and EPA use a lot of energy due to their laboratories. So FEMP has its work cut out for them. So our primary mission, obviously, is to help all of these agencies implement projects to achieve their energy and water management goals, um, as well as their critical missions. So FEMP is set up to address the people, policies, provide guidance, tools, and support financing of these project uh, implementation strategies. And at the base of all of this is people. People are the key. So people within all levels of the organization, whether it's decision makers, um, those that are implementing their projects, those that um, are managing the projects, it all comes down to projects resulting in improved agency resilience, uh, the ability to replicate the projects, and affordable solutions. It also comes down to an interesting story about public-private partnership around ESPCs. So, I'm click happy. Um, so FEMP, uh, as I mentioned, is small, but the impact is really, really big. So this chart reflects the investment over the last 10 years, and FEMP's activities have been key. Uh, the best energy uh, that we can, uh, best energy efficiency really is centered around the energy you don't use. So because of facility investments through project financing, such as ESPCs, the avoided cost of energy in 2016 alone was $2.4 billion. So think about what you could do with that. So what is an ESPC? It's basically um, a contracting vehicle. And it's um, a public-private partnership. So ESPCs are a contract between an agency and an energy service company, otherwise known as an ESCO. Uh, improvements are made by the ESCO under contract to the facility, and the agency pays the ESCO over the term of the contract out of the energy savings. Because again, as I stated, ESPCs do not require the agency to have their money up front, so they don't have to use the appropriated funds. So a quick and simple illustration of this is, if an organization typically pays about $10 per month for their costs, they would continue to budget and pay $10 per month. Then the ESPC comes in and, in, and Im implements the project. Then the cost of energy now is $8 a month. The agency is still paying $10, but the $2 in savings goes to the ESCO to pay down the project. Once the project's paid, the agency gets to keep the equipment, keep realizing the savings. So in the long haul, it's great for the agency, it's good for the ESCO, and it's great for an efficient uh, government uh, for the taxpayers. So we've been doing ESPCs for a long time, uh, 20 years, it's our anniversary, and this is our brag slide. So uh, we just recently uh, awarded, FEMP uh, awarded an indefinite quantity, indefinite delivery, actually I have those backwards, it's indefinite delivery, uh, indefinite quantity contract, which is an umbrella contract vehicle that agencies can use to award their ESPCs and help speed up the contracting process to save even more time and resources to get more projects implemented. So our most recent award that just happened uh, within the last two months has a $55 billion ceiling. Because while progress has been made, uh, there's still a lot of additional projects out there in the government because the federal building stock has been aging. So uh, some equipment and facilities have been in operation 
since Charlie was a small boy in the 1940s. So um, something to keep in mind. So this graphic really shows the benefits of ESPC program over the last 20 years. I just wanted to take a few minutes to talk about a few ESPC uh, success stories and projects in here in our backyard. So DOE has taken advantage of using ESPCs uh, to ensure that it has the capability to meet its mission, which is delivering transformative science and technology solutions through efficiency. DOE has made the necessary infrastructure improvements while at the same time allowing our sites to improve their resiliency and security of mission critical operations through the use of ESPCs. The Food and Drug Administration's White Oak Campus was able to consolidate its facilities across the Washington DC metro area onto one campus. This facility um, actually con conducts important laboratory and research facilities for all sorts of experiments, drug evaluation, veterinary medicine, radiology, and the combined heat and power system that was installed via the ESPC is capable of disconnecting from the grid or islanding. So this facility can actually operate in island mode, which is really important. Um, this facility has been able to continue operation during recent power losses from hurricanes and other weather events, while at the same time realizing 30% uh, in savings. So I would be remiss if I didn't talk about water. Most people think of energy, they think of electricity or fuel or power, but water's in the equation. Reducing our water also reduces the energy required to process it and deliver it to facilities, thus taking a strain off of our aging water infrastructure and sewer infrastructure. And the federal government, as you can see from my slide, uses a lot of water. So what agency do you think uh, uses the most amount of water? It is the Department of Justice. So if you think about prisons, and how much water is used each day in relatively small space, you can kind of wrap your head around um, water consumption and the need to save it. So there's still a large opportunity within the federal government to have significant savings around water and the costs associated with treating water, heating water, delivering water, and disposing of water. So, um, the Smithsonian's National Zoo used an ESPC that was quite uh, creative, thinking outside the box, or in this case, outside the pool. Uh, they were able to use an ESPC to install a pool dung skimmer to reduce elephant water pool change outs that saved six million gallons of water a year. The overall, the federal government has reduced its water intensity by 22% in the last decade and will save 4 billion gallons a year from performance contracting made over the last, over the last five years. But we're not done. Um, there's still the ability to dig deeper for savings. So many of our easy and quick payback measures have already been implemented. And GSA has shown us that new facilities can still yield substantial savings um, through deep energy retrofits. And basically what this is, is ESCOs and agencies have to work together to set the bar a little bit higher, be more aggressive. Um, and at New Carrollton, they were able to use such measures as lighting, which is typically a quick payback, uh, coupled with solar and geothermal systems which take a little bit longer. And this more holistic approach to ESPCs can lead to significant savings. For this project, it's estimated to save about 60%, uh, which is really uh, quite um, admirable. So the future uh, of ESPCs is bright and there's still lots to do. The dark green line uh, on this graph reflects the mandated energy reduction goals for fiscal year 2015, which was really quite steep. 
Femp worked with the White House to address new goals moving forward from 2016, which is the light green line, that shows the federal government is on track to meet these new goals. So while we're leading by example in the federal government, ESPCs um, actually have a lot more that they could do. They're really a workhorse. So at the state level, at the local government level, at the commercial level, really the possibilities, um, I could go on and on. I could go like the non-building levels, but um, I'm sure that my time is running out. So I want to leave you with a thought. Oops. All right, there it is. Um, FEMP is, acts as the lever, and we are helping to provide mechanisms to move the federal government forward to be more efficient, resilient, and secure for an affordable energy future. And all of this can be achieved with the use of performance contracting. So I thank you. And if you want to know uh, more about our training or performance contracting or anything about FEMP, there's a website. And um, I look forward uh, to talking with you.